Back in the 80s, well before anyone really cared about gender identity, especially when it came to toys, for better or for worse, things were basically set in stone. When it came to boy toys, pretty much every character created was a dude. Sure, there was the occasional token female thrown in every now and then, but for the most part, it was usually just one big proverbial sausage fest. So it wasn't much of a surprise that when the first season of the Transformers came and went, there wasn't a single female Transformer to be seen. Much later though, well into the second season, that absence was finally addressed with the simplest of explanations. During the great exodus of Optimus Prime and company from Cybertron to Earth, all the female bots were basically left behind. So apparently, despite not hearing a peep from them at all in the entire first season of the cartoon, female Transformers had always existed from the very start, like since way back into the golden age of Cybertron before the Great War. Thanks to a well-orchestrated time travel trap set up by Megatron, the newly constructed aerial bot team is zapped back into ancient Cybertron where they meet and befriend a regular bot named Orion Pax and his girlfriend Ariel. As the story progresses, both Orion and Ariel are seriously injured during a Decepticon raid on their loading facility, and thanks to their friends from the future, are brought to a young Alpha Trion to be repaired and rebuilt. In case his initials already didn't give it away, OP is rebuilt into Optimus Prime, and while the original plan was to have Ariel die, the writers ultimately decided to save her with an added throwaway line by Alpha Trion, alluding to him eventually rebuilding her into the female counterpart of Optimus, Alita 1. Anyway, after their respective rebirths as Optimus and Alita, the duo continue their fight against the Decepticons. For the next million or so years later, up until the first episode of the show, wherein faced with a war-torn and energon-depleted world, Prime, in a desperate bid to survive, is left with no choice but to leave Cybertron for greener pastures. And while Alita was originally meant to be part of his crew, she is unfortunately left behind and assumed dead by Prime. It's only well into the second season wherein we finally learn that Alita did survive and had spent this entire time leading her own faction of female Autobots against the Decepticons left in Cybertron, led by Shockwave. After orchestrating numerous Energon raids from their secret base, Elita is unfortunately captured, and ever the opportunist, Megatron uses the captive Elita as bait to lure Optimus Prime back to Cybertron and into a trap. In the end, in order to save Prime from death by Acid Bath, Elita 1 used her special ability to freeze time and rescue him. Unfortunately for Elita, this unique power of hers comes at a high cost, requiring the use of her own life force and nearly kills her. Fortunately, Prime is able to locate the now ancient Alpha Trion, who instructs him on how to save Alita 1's life, which he does. And with all things back to their status quo, Optimus returns to Earth while Alita once again remains behind on Cybertron to continue the fight with her team over there. Granted that I'm pretty sure that the writers had no intentions of making Elita 1 a regular character in the show, her shared origin and relationship with Prime left quite the impression on me and I'm sure a good number of the fandom moving forward, as Elita 1 was a character that was constantly revisited and used in many later iterations of the Transformers. Anyway, when tackling all these later iterations of Elita 1, two aspects of her character are almost always consistent with all of them. First, is that despite being initially portrayed as Prime's partner, or even at times, girlfriend, their personalities are quite the opposite, with Prime being more of a, well, optimist, and Elita being more of a pragmatist. And more importantly, their personal motivations with regards to the Autobot cause are oftentimes conflicting. And secondly, while in almost every Transformers story, Prime is the Autobot leader who leaves Cybertron, on the flip side, Elita is the one who stays or is left behind. So with those two aspects in mind, let's get going with possibly the closest Elita to the original G1 version, which ironically is from the more recent War for Cybertron trilogy from 2020. In the story, Prime gets word of Megatron's desire to acquire the ancient life-giving 20-sided die. Sorry, I meant the AllSpark. And so hatches a plan for the Autobots to leave Cybertron with the AllSpark in hand. Elita 1, serving as Prime's second-in-command, shares that she has no doubt that taking the AllSpark off-world could have unforeseen consequences on Cybertron, but ever the loyal soldier goes along with it. 
Anyway, in the climactic battle to end the first chapter of the trilogy, seemingly left with no choice, Prime hurls the All Spark into a space bridge and goes off with his crew to find it. But Elita, on the other hand, decides to stay behind and continue the fight on Cybertron with a ragtag bunch of Autobots. Unfortunately, things don't turn out so great for Elita, as she suspected. Without the Allspark, Cybertron itself begins to die, and Megatron gets desperate and proceeds to cannibalize the sparks of captive Autobots and expendable Decepticons alike for Energon to survive. In the end, Elita and her crew lose their lives in a final strike against the Decepticons. Her death is confirmed when many years later, Prime returns to Cybertron and discovers her dead body in a snowdrift. But the Allspark is brought back to Cybertron, which in turn summons Elita and all the departed Transformers spirits to aid Optimus Prime in defeating Galvatron and Nemesis Prime. And with that done, Elita's spirit departs, but not before assuring Prime that all the choices that he made were the right ones and that she loved him. Aww. Oh well, at least Elita got a really great toy out of this. Sure, it was basically a retool of an RC toy, but given that Elita was the more important and impactful character in the show, and RC got an even more unique Studio Series 86 version soon after, I'll give this one to Elita. Another major iteration of Elita 1 which had quite the unique twist would be from the 2007 series Transformers Animated. In the show, we are introduced to the Decepticon Black Arachnia, who I guess you could say was an homage to the popular Beast Wars character of the same name. But it's really her character's origin in this series that is quite interesting as it is revealed that before she was Black Arachnia, she was a young Autobot cadet named, you guessed it, Elita 1. And just to make sure that we got the connection, her design sported a ponytail-shaped extension looking very similar to the one that the original G1 Ariel had. And like the G1 Elita, this version also possessed a unique ability which, while not as powerful as Stop the time! was thankfully also not as life-threatening. Animated Elita had the ability to borrow powers from fellow Transformers, and she enjoyed going on adventures exploring other planets with her fellow cadets Optimus and Sentinel. Anyway, during one of these off-the-books adventures on the planet of Arca 7, she and her friends were attacked by giant spiders. You'd think the planet's name would have tipped them off. And in an attempt to escape, Elita is separated from the group, and believing that she was a lost cause, is unfortunately left behind. Unbeknownst to Optimus and Sentinel though, Elita 1 did not die, but instead was transformed, okay, mutated into something else. It turned out that she attempted to borrow the giant spider's power in order to defend herself, and while she was injected by their venom, Elita survived in a different form. After that experience, she was no longer Elita 1, but was forever changed into Black Arachnia. And while we never got an animated Elita toy, we sure as hell got one of Black Arachnia, and I have to say, she was awesome. One of the best actually from the animated line, a line that to this day I consider to be one of the greatest Transformer toy lines ever. Anyway, we'll get to Black Arachnia a little later on. Not to be left out, the comics also had their unique and in many ways extremely compelling takes on Alita 1. The first of which was one that was unfortunately cut short in the early 2000s Transformers series by Dreamwave Comics. While nothing ever came out of it due to the company's abrupt end, Alita 1 and her fellow fembots were on the verge of making their grand debut as agents of the frequent Transformers antagonists, the Quintessons. While ultimately I figure they would have eventually ended up on the side of the good guys, I do believe that this dubious origin would have been a catalyst for future more interesting takes on Elita 1. At least, I'd like to think so. In the IDW comics, Elita 1 is a completely reimagined character as no longer being the Autobot left behind, but instead as the one who left everything else behind. In this universe, Elita 1 is introduced as the leader of the Carcerians, a long-lost Transformers colony who left Cybertron a long, long time ago, and have dedicated their existence to keeping an ancient evil named Leech Maximo imprisoned on board their home base, a huge spaceship called Carcer, which is in fact itself a really, really, really big and ancient Transformer Titan named Vigilum. If at this point you find yourself rather confused, it's okay. The IDW universe tells an extremely dense story that spans over multiple years and hundreds of issues. All you ought to know is that this is not your 80s Elita, 
and the fact that she goes by the title of the first one and rules her people sitting on a throne made of the parts of their greatest fallen warriors should clue you in on that. I think it's also worth noting that this Alita has absolutely zero romantic connection to Optimus Prime. In fact, she is often at odds with Prime whom she finds to be overly idealistic, and her more authoritarian approach to leadership greatly clashes with Prime's desire for freedom and unity among Cybertronians. But at the end of the day, despite their differences and her intensity, Alita shows her true heroic nature when she readily sacrifices herself in the climactic IDW universe ending battle against Unicron as she defiantly pilots her titan ship Carcer right into the planet eater's face. And while her selfless act didn't actually defeat Unicron, it allowed a good number of Cybertronians to escape to safety. Anyway, going back to basics is one of the most recent versions of Alita 1 in the pages of the Transformers series by Skybound Comics. While the basic story beats are almost identical to the original story, Autobots and Decepticons leaving an extremely war-torn Cybertron and crashing on Earth to continue their war there, with Alita once again being left behind. This is where many of the similarities end as Skybound's take is a definitely more brutal and gritty version of the familiar story. Just like Nigel Tufnell's amp, this one goes to 11. So yeah, I know you must be pretty amped up for what's coming next, but before we go any further, I just wanted to give a quick spoiler warning for those who have plans of still reading this excellent series. You have been warned, and while we're at it, you are also being requested to help me out by leaving a like, comment, or better yet, a sub to help my channel grow. And if you like stuff like early access and exclusive videos, why not try out being a friend of the toy shelf? All you gotta do is click on the join button on my channel's homepage. But in the end, any way you choose to help me out would be very much appreciated, so thank you. And now back to the story. So while Prime and company had the luxury of removing themselves from a never-ending war, laying dormant for an extended period of time, and eventually waking up in a new and relatively peaceful and resource-rich home, paradise actually, compared to the hellhole they came from, Elita didn't have that. All that time, Elita won never stopped fighting. While Prime took a proverbial time out, Elita continued to battle on the losing side of a great war, seeing fellow comrades and close friends continuously being hunted down, tortured, and executed. And the horrors that she endured were explicitly shown in the way she was drawn. You could see the trauma and pain in her face as clear as day. Very jarring if you ask me. This is the Elita One that we are introduced to as the sole survivor of a recent suicide mission to rescue a barely functioning and unrecognizable Ultra Magnus stripped down to his robotic skeleton. Facing certain death herself, Elita is saved when she comes across a mysterious portal and out of options, steps through it and finds herself surprisingly reunited with Prime on Earth. The portal turns out to be a space bridge set up by the Decepticon Shockwave as he siphons off energy from Earth directly into Cybertron. Anyway, while the reunion between two dear old friends provides a brief respite from the dire situation, just as an aside, I love the tiny detail thrown in of Prime simply addressing her as L, showcasing just how close these two were. It isn't long before reality sets in and it is apparent how distant as individuals they have evolved into and the differences and core priorities between Elita and Prime become clear as day. While Prime is focused on rescuing his captured comrades on Earth, Elita can only think of Cybertron and their dying comrades over there, which leads her to ultimately betray Optimus Prime by attempting to forcibly keep Prime on Cybertron by destroying the space bridge and allowing Shockwave's power siphoning device to continue transferring Energon to Cybertron at the cost of ravaging the Earth leaving Prime with the impossible decision of saving either his old home of Cybertron or his new one on Earth. Ultimately, despite Elita's desperate pleas, Prime chooses his new home, blowing up the Energon reserves accumulated through Shockwave's machine, and returns to Earth, once again, leaving a despondent, broken, and defeated Elita on her own. I know we could debate all day on who was right and who was wrong, or whether Prime's and especially Elita's actions were justified, but that's not the point. This was just a really well-told story about the awful realities of war and the choices that individuals caught up in this vicious cycle of violence and destruction take. And it's not yet done as I suspect Elita's story is far from over, and her eventual return could possibly lead to some 
dire consequences for Prime. Okay. Okay. So that was pretty grim, wasn't it? So before we get completely sucked into the darkness, let's shift gears into something a little more lighter, shall we? Let's talk more toys. As with more attention given to Alita One's character, inevitably comes more plastic representation, and there have been quite a lot. First up would be Alita One's inclusion in the live-action movies. Even if Alita wasn't a part of the first movie in 2007, a toy of her was released as part of the toy line. Actually, it was basically a quick repaint of a much older Energon RC toy from 2004. She did, however, make her official live-action debut in the second movie as part of a trio of biker transformers along with her sisters, RC and Chromia. And while this trio is initially addressed collectively as RC, it is later explained in some supplementary comics that the sisters were originally three separate characters, with Alita 1 and Chromia being previously killed off and resurrected into this new triform with RC. Anyway, ultimately, it's all for nothing, as aside from their obligatory cool action introduction at the start of the movie, they don't do anything else substantial and are basically killed off, for good this time, in the final battle. Possibly the most unique take on Alita 1 though would be the version we got in 2018's Power of the Primes line, as Alita returned as an upgraded central unit for other fellow Autobots to combine with to form a bigger robot. Basically, she could be linked with any other limb bots to form Alita Infinite. Or, if you were more of the United theme type of person, you could pair her up with fellow fembots Moonracer, Greenlight Lancer, and Nova Star, who were all also released in the line to form Orthea. Oh, and you could also kind of fudge it and throw in Chromia into the mix as well. But if a combiner Elita 1 isn't your thing, Hasbro's got you as well, with a more run-of-the-mill Elita 1 as part of 2022's Legacy line. This version is possibly the closest to her original G1 design, with much snazzier boots. Look, I get that these are female robots, but they don't all have to look like they're wearing some sort of metallic swimsuits or leotards. And speaking of her original Elita 1 design, a year later, they even gave us a toy of her original form of Ariel, even if it is yet another RC retool slash repaint. So yeah, I think you've pretty much got all your Elita 1 plastic bases covered. Sort of. Unfortunately, in the masterpiece scale, Elita 1 is yet to get some love officially or unofficially. Although a few years ago, third-party company x Transbots did show off a prototype for a masterpiece Elita, and it looked pretty rough. But hey, maybe we'll see it in the year 2099. And finally, let's end it on a really high note, wherein I find it quite fitting that Elita 1 is featured as one of the main and central characters in the next major chapter of the Transformers story, the movie Transformers 1. Okay, okay, I know this one isn't a reference to her, but it's still a cool coincidence in my book. Anyway, to be honest, my first impression of this Elita wasn't a good one, as she had me initially cringing as yet another one-note girl boss Mary Sue who is better than everyone else. The straight character to the male goofballs. But surprisingly, she turned out to be my favorite of the main cast. Not because she was so awesome and kick-ass, although to be fair she was, but because she showed her true awesomeness in more relatable and effective ways. Even if this is a definitely lighter take on the character as compared to the many more recent versions, this Elita shares the same grounded, focused, and pragmatic personality as her predecessors, and it once again clashes with the dreamer that is Orion Pax. But her shining moment is when she realizes just how special Orion is, in that he is a, well, optimist, and has the potential to inspire others to make their world better, including herself. And she makes him see this, setting him off on his own personal journey to become Optimus Prime. So yeah, in this case, no Elita, no Prime. Anyway, another fun aspect of this movie is that on the flip side, it also introduces a character named Arachnid, who was based on a character of the same name from the Transformers series Prime in 2010, and who is herself a sort of iteration of Black Arachnia, and who naturally serves as a personal antagonist to Elita 1. And given the shared connection between the animated version of Elita 1 and Black Arachnia, I find this rivalry pretty cool. Also, despite the fact that she transforms into a Cybertronian gyrocopter, the original alt form of Arachnid slash Black Arachnia is a Black Widow spider. And Elita 1 is voiced by the actress Scarlett Johansson, best known for playing the MCU character Black Widow who died in Avengers Endgame, which featured Thanos, played by Josh Brolin, who was in the 2000 movie Hollow Man that starred Kevin Bacon. Nice. 
But that's enough talk about spiders and bacon. Actually, bacon does sound pretty good right now. So yeah, just like Alita, I'll leave you all at that. And speaking of leaving, how about the story of the Decepticon who Megatron left behind? The one-eyed mad scientist, Shockwave. You can check out his story over here. Or if you want other Transformers stuff, you can go over here. Either way, thanks for watching, and I hope you come back for more. Music